All right, on today's episode, we're going to change things up a little bit. We're going to talk to two athletic trainers who have made their way into the sales, clinical specialist, product support realm uh, professionally. I uh, get, uh, you know, they've got cool stories of how they got there and, and why they got there. And so I wanted to highlight just, you know, the importance of the, the ability for athletic trainers to do a lot of different things with our skill set. And we're going to talk about that with Josh and with Andrew about how what they learned in the traditional athletic training education uh, realm that prepared them for this role and vice versa. We're going to talk shop about that. So Josh and Andrew, it's really awesome to have you on the Catalyzing Podcast. Thanks so much for joining today. Yeah, thanks for having us. Happy to be here. Yeah, happy to be yeah. here. Absolutely. So um, just a real quick, you know, Andrew Nesbitt is a clinical specialist with Boston Scientific and Joshua Jimenez is a sales consultant with H-Wave. And when, before we get into some of our questions, real quick, a little icebreaker as a part of a team, because you're still part of a team with what you do right now. What do you think is the most important part of being successful as a team? Um, I would say, and I would say communication, 100% communication and the ability to really get across what it is that you need when you're a part of that team and how you can contribute to that team. So, you know, I don't know what you think, Andrew. So, yeah, I would agree. Communication, like anything is key, right? Like if you're not on the same page, your, your team is only as strong as, you know, your weakest link. Um, I think it's really important. Communication is a big part of what you two do. I know that for a fact. So we uh, <laughs> that's a great lead into to where we're going to go. But before we kind of go down into to some of the uh, nuts and bolts of it, let's start with Andrew. Kind of share your why behind what led you to transition into the realm of being a clinical specialist with Boston Scientific um, and, and kind of what drove you in that direction. Yeah, so um, I started off as a strength and conditioning coach, and then I made my way into an athletic training master's program at Montclair State. Um, and I loved everything about it. I loved strength and conditioning. I loved the rehab aspect of it. So I was listening to all these podcasts, anything I get my ears and eyes on. Um, and, you know, I was listening to a lot of seasoned uh, veterans in the game about athletic training and whatever it may be, physical therapy, but a lot of athletic training podcasts. And, you know, they were 25 years in the game, 30 years in the game. And they were like one thing that, you know, looking back on it, I miss a lot of, you know, birthdays, weddings, you know, preceptors would tell me the same thing. And, you know, I knew I didn't want to be the athletic trainer 25 years down the line saying I missed all these birthdays, miss out on these major life events. And for me, it was just quality of life. Um, you know, I was doing athletic training for a couple of years, but I didn't want to be stuck down the road. So that was a big thing for me. And, um, you know, a big life event happened. I moved up to Newark with my now fiance and she's going to school. Um, so we had to make money and starting off in athletic training, sometimes it can be rough. You know, you take a job, your first job making $30,000 and, you know, in today's economy, it's just, you can't survive on that. You know, you can't support myself and my fiance. Um, so it was big, big thing for me was quality of life. I appreciate that. And what about you, Josh? Um, I, I would say along the same lines with quality of life. And so another thing also is uh, for me, the business aspect of being a sales consultant and being in this industry was, was another driver for me. Um, I'm, I love business and I love the ability to, to interact with so many people. Um, you know, we do that in athletic training as well, but you know, it was, it was tough to kind of have that quality of life and that business aspect of it. Cause it's just different. Of course, the two things. Um, but, but that was a real big driver for me. Um, and, you know, I, I figured I, need, I wanted to find something where I could also help people, uh, finding, you know, to me, for me, I can't sell any, like any, anything. I want to sell something that is specific and I could really measure and, and help people, people's lives, just like we do in athletic training. Uh, because at that point, it's not really me selling a product. It's me really believing in that and in, in, in believing what I can do with it and, and help so many people. So, you know, again, quality of life in, in that business aspect, those two things were, were a big driver for me. So that's, that's where I'm at there. I get it. And, you know, Joshua, I've known you for, for a few more years than I've known Andrew here. <laughs> and um, it was always clear that that passion was there for you to want to help people. You just were trying to figure out how you wanted to do that and in what way. Um, and you were, you were driven uh, to, to go down that path. So I appreciate both of you sharing that. What, what does a typical day, week, month look like? Let's start with you, Josh. 
Um, because yeah. your roles are, are there's probably similarities between the two of you, but also mm-hmm. some differences. What's a typical schedule like for you? Yeah. So at the moment, so my p- particular schedule is a little, is a little hectic at the moment because the, the area I'm in North Jersey is a, is a new area. It's a brand new territory for, for H wave. So it's really trying to get in and, and I'm prospecting, I'm having lunches and meetings with uh, all different types of, of professionals, uh, whether it be physical therapists, neurosurgeons, orthopedic uh, physicians. So all across the board and really trying to understand where H wave can fit in their, in their, in their needs. Um, so, you know, again, prospecting meetings, um, and of course fitting patients once those orders come in. And so it's, it's a little all over the place, it, you know, I'm setting up systems to kind of organize those things, but at the moment it's, it's, it's a bit hectic in that way. Um, that's, that's pretty much what my weeks are looking like. It's just, um, going to these offices, figuring out, Hey, do you, do you do my vertical markets, which are work comp and auto accidents of veterans and, do you do it? Yes. Do you not do it? No. Okay. So I swipe you off my list and I continue and I keep going and going and until I find someone that's looking to find a product that gets people better faster. So that's, that's my week currently. And who are your typical team members that you would work with on any given week besides yes. potential prospects? Yeah. So uh, my, the team members are my regional director. I work with him. You know, I, I call him for advice. I call him for some coaching. I call him for, for things that I don't know. Same thing with you know, authorizations and processing, you know, if it's something I don't know, I, I have a team out in California that I can just teams real quick. Um, make sure it's, you know, if it's early in the morning, I got to make sure it's not too early for them, mm-hmm. but I teams them. And then, you know, I say, Hey, can you give me more information on, you know, do we t- take this type of patient with this? And they'll say, Hey, yeah, we do that. So, you know, they're, they're a big support, but out in the field, it's really just me. Um, it's autonomy. I have a lot of autonomy. It's, it, you know, with that autonomy comes a lot of trust that I'm going to do that job and get it done. So, um, you know, that's something that I hold really important to me because if you're giving me that trust, I want to honor that. And, uh, and I want to make sure that uh, I'm doing what I need to get done. So um, hopefully that answers that question. Yeah. And that's a crucial part of, of being a team <clears throat> member when you have a team that's spread out, you know, when you're dealing with, you got people in California, you got people locally, that trust is crucial. I'm glad you mentioned that because you need to not only have leaders that, trust you to do what you can do well, but you also need to trust them to support you and in, in, in the other way around. It's autonomy, yet it's team. And I think that's where the beauty lies whenever you have uh, team members that work spread out is when they have the trust of supporting them each other, being there for one another, but also being able to own your own space and just do your own thing. Um, that That's uh, very crucial for teams working together well. Andrew, what about yourself? What's uh, What's your typical schedule looking like and what's your team comprised of yeah so um my schedule is similar to josh's but a big area where it differs is that i have or time Mm -hmm. right i'm stepping in the or with uh, pain physicians neuros and orthos um so my day and week is really you know um i guess molded around those or times we could have case times that start at 7 30 all the way up to like 4 p.m so between those times right you can really do what you want. There's a lot of autonomy. Um, And this is where I have a great team surrounding me with like Austin and Allison, they're great teammates. So we divide and conquer. We say, we're going to stop at this physician's office. We're going to get this done. We're going to follow up with these patients. And it's really what you make of it, right? Like you can just go to the OR, do your case, go home and just call it a day. Um, But that's just not the business we're in. Um, We're in sales. So, you know, we want to make these stops. We want to, you know, reach as many physicians and patients as we can. Um, you know, there's like 50 million people living in pain and out of those 50 million, there's only like 4 million that see a provider. So there's a lot of work to be done. Um, so it's always busy, but it's great. Awesome. And I can really tell from just, uh, your tone and from your, your, you're talking with you in the past that it, that is important for you to, to be that mm-hmm. resource for those people in pain. Um, yeah. you know, it, it's, it's one thing to just sell a product and just to try and push that product, but to, to, as you mentioned earlier, Josh, to do something you believe in and then also see it making a difference with people that makes you want to keep going. You know, it, it drives you as well. So um, that that's really cool to hear. You both were athletic trainers. You still are athletic trainers. What are some specific attributes and characteristics from your experience in the traditional setting of athletic training during your 
you know, your curriculum time, your athletic training education program, and also your first few jobs that's helped you be more effective in your current role today that maybe others who haven't been athletic trainers might not have that same advantage. Uh, yeah, I would like to start off and start Go off. For it. Great. Um, so I would say the first time I had an actual patient and I started off this way was, it was very nerve wracking because you have somebody that's trusting you mm -hmm. and expecting you to know what you need to know in order to help them serve and serve them. So I always think about that. And it's one of those things where over time it gets easier, right? You're talking to a patient, you have that patience, you have that empathy, and you have the ability to get to the root of the issue. You're not just saying, oh, your shoulder hurts, put something on it. You're, you're kind of understanding what was the mechanism of injury? Um, you know, okay, great. Can you move it, you know, past 90? Can you move it here? Can you move it there? So all these calibrated questions are there to figure out what the root of the issue is so that you can then give them a plan of care that is for them, right? A, a, a specific plan of care that will get them better. So, and, and, I, and I lead with that because what I'm doing isn't so different, right? Um, you know, and I'm not, I'm not saying I, I've been doing this forever because I haven't, I'm new, I'm new at this, you know? And it's one of those things where I get nervous still going out. And, you know, I've spoken with physicians and, and have done that already. Uh, and it's still a little nerve wracking, you know, because I'm still learning in that process. Um, and and go, wrapping that back up to the patient, right? You're, you're, when you're speaking to people, you're still trying to get to the root of the issue. Like, hey, do, do you need something that is going to help people in pain? Give them long lasting pain relief without having to take medications. Is that something that's important to them? Okay, if it is, it, great. If it's not, okay, do you need something that can help them with range of motion? Like, you know, you're trying to really find their, the calibrated questions to help find the root of their issue and solve that problem and fill that gap. So what we're, what I'm doing isn't so different than what an athletic trainer does. And it's really trying to just, you know, have athletic trainers remind themselves that you're just crossing a bridge and you're doing a different thing, but it's not so different because I feel like people forget, you know, they kind of compartmentalize so much. And I'm, I'm one that does that. That's really hard to transfer those skills. Um, so, you know, that's, that's how I kind of relate it to that, you know, talking to a patient, talking to a, a potential customer, it's not so different because you're trying to find out how to, you know, serve, the, you know, serve that gap and, and you know, and serve whatever they need to get done. So I appreciate that. And you're right. It's what you're working with is a product. It's a tool, but it's how it fits into their life to solve the problems that you have that background to be able to frame it for them and also help them discover maybe some other solutions that complement that device or, or those products and resources that, that, that comes in handy to be effective to people. Yes. They, they believe you want to help them besides just trying to sell your product. For, yeah. hundred yeah. percent. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah. So some attributes I want to talk about are just being agile and being able to handle high stress, right? Yeah. Going back to that schedule, um, you know, you have a case time set at 4 PM and then molding your day around that. You know, you can get a text from the OR saying we're starting at 2.30 and you had your whole day planned out, you know, in, the, in sales and now you got to scramble to get there. You could be an hour away and you just be flying 90 miles per hour down the Garden State Parkway to make it there on time. <laughs> um, and athletic training, right? Like there were times, you know, I thought a practice was going to be at, you know, this time. And the AD texted you, hey, we're, we're going two hours later or two hours before. And you got to be, you know, able to adapt in that sense. Um and being agile on the field, same same with being agile in the in the OR. You know, things don't always go according to plan, and you know mm -hmm. they rarely do. But I think that's a great attribute that all athletic trainers have, and that would be easily transferable over to the sales world. Um, and then handling high stress, right? Uh, we've seen like, for example, Demar Hamlin going down. That's a super stressful situation for everybody involved. You know, if the ATs and the medical staff didn't, if they acted like two seconds later, who knows? Who knows what would have happened. Um, and, you know, when you're in the OR, I'm dealing primarily with people's spines and their spinal cords. And if something goes wrong, like, God forbid, you know, talking about paralyzation or, you know, yeah. things of that nature. So being able to handle that and these people looking at you to change their life, right? These people in chronic pain, they just want to walk around and spend time with their grandkids. Um, and, you know, you, you want to do the best job you can. Um, and it's stressful. It, it, you know, 
I try and not bring work home with me. <laughs> and, but, you know, I talk to my fiance all the time about it. Like, you know, did I do the right thing? Um, did I, you know, possibly ruin somebody's life? Like, these are just, you know, stressful situations. But being an athletic trainer, like, we're so well equipped to cope with that. You know, if I wasn't, I don't, I don't know how I'd be able to do it. You know? And and it's, you know, those parallels are are very clear when it comes to being a clinician and doing what the two of you are doing right now with not just about the communication, being part of a team, being agile, um, having the the stress management of a, a high stress, especially in the OR where, where that's uh, something that, that could be higher stress. Um, but just the, the aspect of learning from your experience and growing from it, almost like a, a clinical assessment of your own approach and then getting better each time as you go out that next opportunity and learning from it. It's very similar to the clinical process of going through your career and honing your evaluation skills, honing your, your clinical skill set. Um, so it, it's a growth. And a big part of that growth is just continuing education, reading, um, self-development and whatnot. And I'm really curious what what do you focus your continuing education on in your current realm right now? I know, you know, of course, you have to have your, your BOC approved credits, but there's also probably things that you sharpen your saw with that aren't necessarily um, lean, you know, with, uh, with just the clinical stuff. So what is it that you focus on? So, so I, so a great thing about the company that I work for now is they offer something called the, they offer something called dimensions of professional selling. And the whole idea with the course was really communication and how to really get to the issue and understand the other person's operating reality, which is their perspective and, and their true perspective. So that's, that's something that I found amazing to have because uh, that really opened my eyes to, again, it's not so different than what we did with athletic training um, because they're trying to really get to the root cause of, of whatever injury it is. Um, so, you know, that's one thing that I, I found amazing uh, that I did for, in terms of professional development. Uh, and the same thing goes with keeping up with my clinical knowledge. You know, my product is still dealing, I'm still dealing with extremities. I'm still dealing with pain. I'm still dealing with, with anatomy. I'm still dealing with the body. So being a high clinician is something that's important to me uh, so that I can understand how to better serve my customers who are medical professionals. So, you know, I'm not somebody who's just learning the job and is just regurgitating information. I'm somebody who understands the movements of the shoulder, understands what can happen to a knee and, and those injuries and, and how they heal. And I want to keep sharpening that knife uh, by, you know, continuing to learn about things so that I can better serve my customers. And at the end of the day, it's not even, it's also obviously better serving my customers, but it's also the patient, you know, making sure that I'm able to, you know, serve the patient in a way where I get them better faster. Yeah. Appreciate that. Um, Andrew, anything you'd like to add to that? Yeah, I think you said it best, honestly, professional development happens every day right? You know, we take these courses, the BOC courses, uh, whatever yeah. it may be, like Graston, stuff like that. But, sure. you know, you're learning when, once you see a sprained ankle that's in front of you, you know, you learn from that, right? You learn what you did well treating that ankle and how fast you got them back to playing and return to play. And then same thing goes for professional development in the sales world, right? Like I make mistakes every single day. And, yeah. you know, I, I learn from that. Um, you know, I may, may make a mistake, mistake today, but tomorrow I'm going to try and do better. And that's the best thing you can do, right? I can read a book on selling, which is great. But until I'm in front of somebody selling the product, making those mistakes, that's how I'm going to sharpen my skills and just get better. And luckily I get to do it every day. 100%. And yeah. I call Andrew sometimes and I tell him the same thing. <laughs> hey, I did this today. And he goes like, hey, it's okay. You know, you're going to know for next time. And, you know, guess what? I, I know it next time. So yeah, it's, it's funny. I started like a year ahead of Josh. So I see him doing the same things that I, <laughs> it, it's really I remember that <laughs> it's funny. Well, that's, you know what you two serve as a team member for each other as, as support. And that's super crucial to have that um, going through what you're going through just to, to grow. I appreciate that, but let's flip it from the other side. Let's say you both were to venture back into the traditional realm of athletic training. What are one or two skills or specialty areas from what you do now that you would take back over there and you think would help you be more effective as a clinical athletic trainer? 
So honestly, I think we have, you know, all the skills that we need, right? And we just don't know it sometimes from the athletic training perspective, like, you know, how to market ourselves. I think we do a much better job with that. But, you know, after leaving that world and looking back, I had those skills, you know, just sometimes I didn't know how to use them or when to use them. Um, so I think we have all the skills necessary as an athletic trainer. It's just maybe, you know, moving outside of your comfort zone, doing something different to realize you have these skills. Um, and, you know, once you're really in it, you know, I could talk to AT. We still have a lot of friends that are athletic trainers and we, we tell them all this advice, market yourself better, communicate better in different ways. I shouldn't say better, just in different ways, maybe more effective ways. Um, but I think we have all the skills necessary. Yeah, hundred percent. I was telling Andrew in terms of that self-awareness, I think being self-aware that we have the skills and, and it's just, it's just knowing and having the confidence to use them. And, and that's really it. And, and the soft skills are, are huge and hugely important. And we have a lot of those skills as, as athletic trainers, you know, we're dealing with, with stressful situations. We're dealing with, with all sorts of people on multi levels, you know, from, you know, from physicians, athletic directors, people in, in different positions. So we're already doing that. We just have to have the self-awareness to know and the confidence to do, to do it and, and to be, to say, Hey, let's try it. Just like you said, you know, just, just do it. You know, I feel like a Nike commercial. <laughs> <laughs> just do it. Right Absolutely. Sure. <laughs> and that, that's so crucial. And also getting that feedback. Cause you know, sometimes you have to get thrown into the fire a little bit to challenge that your, your yes. soft skills, your interpersonal skills in a different realm and then get constructive and helpful feedback to hone it, to get better is crucial too. Yeah. And, and that's a hundred percent. I have multiple scenarios in my head already that I'm speaking with physicians. And like I mentioned, I still, I get nervous, you know, I get nervous of doing something new and I want to make sure I do a good job and, and, you know, I want to make sure that my product knowledge is there and it's a lot of information. It's, you know, drinking from a fire hose. Uh, but as we, you know, we've said, you get better every day and every time you have another meeting, it gets better. Your product knowledge is better. The understanding of everything is better. So it's just taking those little wins and, and just having that self-awareness. That's fantastic. Well, I know that you believe in what you do and uh, you're having a lot of fun. Let's say there's other athletic trainers out there that are thinking about making that switch into the sales realm in any capacity. What is one or two bits of advice that you would give them to help them be successful in that transition? Maybe lessons you learned or just things that you found super helpful. Um, I would say network to the job that you want. And by that, I mean, reach out to the people in the positions that you're looking for that they're already in and, and learn from them. You know, if there's a sales rep or a clinical specialist that you see is working for a company you want to work for, reach out to them, reach out to five of 10 of them, because each region is different. Each location is different. You don't know what it's like. You can, you can reach out to someone in the West Coast, but that team might be different than someone on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. So get a wide variety of perspectives um, understand the position. And then once you're in an interview, try to get a ride along, try to get, um, you know, time in the OR, you know, try to try to do a lot of the things to make an informed decision because, you know, there is a lot to be said about the medical device and, and the pharmaceutical roles and all these roles. Uh, but it's really about finding the right fit for you, for the athletic trainer and seeing where you can maximize on those skills. Um, you know, don't look at, you know, the dollar signs, don't look at the, the cushy schedule that could be cushy, you know, look at the position and look at the people that are working in there to make sure you're making an informed decision with all the knowledge that you can have. Awesome. Yeah, I think that's great. Um, you know, going back to your, your first question, it's like knowing your why, right? Know why you want to make the change um, and do it for the right reasons, right? Like I could have chosen a career where I'm just selling just random screws and bolts to somebody yeah. and, you know, that just collect a paycheck and just sell bolts. But I wanted to work with these patients that need help and want to change their lives. And I want to be a part of that. That's, that's why I did that. So really knowing your why. And another thing is, you know, just don't pigeonhole yourself as an AT. Right? You know, you can do a lot more than just athletic training. Again, those transferable skills, we have them um, reach out, talk to somebody, um, reach out to one of us that we, you know, I've talked and spoke to a lot of athletic trainers about this world and, you know, they just don't know about it. I didn't know about it until a recruiter reached out to me on LinkedIn. <laughs> I had no idea. I was like, what is this? And then Andrew told me about it. <laughs> <laughs> and then he told me and then I told somebody else. And, that there you go. 
Like, so, I, yeah. I, I think, you know, it's a huge market and I think a lot of athletic trainers could benefit from this, from this field. That's awesome. What is exciting to see, see that transition? Um, you know, bottom line, we just need, uh, there's so much more, so many more opportunities out there for athletic trainers. Now uh, it's, it's a better job market than ever. It's competitive and, and hopefully it's allowing a lot of people like yourself to, to find a true niche and to find something you can be passionate about and have balance and have good quality of life and be paid well and, and, and continue to use that passion and, and own your spark to really just do some good things. So it's really great having a conversation with, with both of you. It was great seeing uh, both of you recently as well too, and hope to get to see you again very soon. But thank you for taking some time to be on the podcast and uh, to share your information and uh, your story to, to help others learn from that and maybe want to give it a try themselves. Awesome. Yeah, no, thanks for having us. I'm super excited. And yeah, yeah hopefully if anybody needs anything, reach out to us. Yeah, absolutely. Nice you, man. Your contact info will be in the show notes. Um, so they can definitely reach out to you. But uh, fellas, keep rocking, keep doing the great things and really appreciate your time. Yeah, appreciate it, Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. Absolutely. Take care. Take care. Bye.